From the WRAL News Studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the WRAL Daily Download, an in-depth conversation on a story worth talking about. Hello and welcome to the WRAL Daily Download. I'm Travis Fain and today's deep dive conversation is with Rick Smith, co-founder and editor of WRAL TechWire, our prolific website for business news, economic development, and cutting-edge technology. Welcome, Rick. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. That was a great introduction. It, well, this is my first time, and this is a new podcast, so that's <laughs> auspicious. Today, we're talking jobs and money. North Carolina has been on a streak. New high-tech facilities announced for sites in Chatham County, Randolph County, Guilford County. Kind of building a corridor, I think, that will impact maybe you know the whole state. Big focus on batteries, electric vehicles, and on Friday, an announcement Semiconductor chips, a key component in, what, roughly everything these days? Uh, just about. Smartphones, laptops, you, you name it. Uh, uh, solar power, chips, all the new uh, cars out there have to have the chips. It's a real challenge, uh, and North Carolina is going to benefit from that. Yeah, one of the reasons that vehicles have been so expensive recently, right? Because it, it, after the pandemic, during the pandemic, difficult to get these chips uh, where they need to be. Exactly right. Uh, one of the major auto dealers just announced a huge $7,000, I think it is, price increase in forthcoming vehicles simply because of the, of the cost of the, uh, of the batteries and the chips needed to power them. All right. So an answer on the way, or at least a partial one, Wolf Speed, which is based in Durham, used to be known as Cree. They'll be making these chips in Chatham County, I believe the largest such factory either in the world or the United States. Uh, 1,800 jobs coming. Rick, tell us about this project, and then we're going to talk about how it fits into the broader economic picture in North Carolina for the next few decades. Well, first, uh, Chatham County is, is the hub now uh, for high-tech development in the state in terms of manufacturing between uh, Wolf Speed and VinFast, the electric vehicle manufacturer. They have commitments for $9 billion. That's nine with a B investment and 9,000 jobs uh, in a county with a relatively small population. And a lot of them very good paying jobs, I think. That's exactly right. Uh, we're talking $50,000 and, and, and up. These are not the $180,000 a year jobs that Apple is promising for their campus in RTP, but in Chatham County, that is big, big money. Yeah, I, and... You, you talked about VinFast, Vietnamese company, going to actually make cars. Uh, Toyota has announced, I believe in Randolph County, mm -hmm. they're going to make batteries that go in the cars and maybe in other things too. Uh, Boom Supersonic I'll throw in there. They're going to build you know, next wave supersonic jets, they say, in Guilford County. I, I, are we becoming a hub? particularly for electric vehicles, but maybe broader than that. You know, for years, we tried to lure a traditional automaker to these mega sites, these big plots of land. We struck out time after time. But now this new generation, are, are we becoming, are we going to see a supply chain boom here related to electric vehicles, you think? I think over time, we will. Uh, Toyota has already decided to expand its site that it's building in Randolph County and adding another 300 jobs. And then you've got the Wolf Speed deal, the VinFast deal, Boom Supersonic, like, like you said. And they're all located in what's come to be called the, the North Carolina core. It's a 120-mile corridor stretching from Fayetteville to Winston-Salem and the Piedmont Triad, Triad in, International uh, Airport. So the core however, is different from the research triangle in that it's more focused on industry and high-tech, clean-tech manufacturing. Uh, so you have two very complementary cores, if you will, the one from Fayetteville to Winston-Salem, then you've got the research triangle hub, which is loaded, as everybody knows, with high-tech and uh, not to be overlooked, biopharmaceuticals. So, yes, we're emerging as a, again as a manufacturing hub. That was long a North Carolina tradition. Uh, and then we went through NAFTA and other things and lots of plant closings. The economy has evolved to where we're moving from textile manufacturing jobs to high-end automobiles, chips, uh, and uh, batteries, 
and supersonic airliners that will be built in Winston-Salem take out, or near Winston-Salem, take out off from uh, Piedmont Triad Airport, head to the Atlantic, and then start breaking the uh, sound barrier uh, off the Atlantic uh, heads, you know, in, not too far for, probably from where the Wright brothers were first in flight. I had not thought about it that way. That's interesting. What, what broke the dam on this? What Do you have a sense of why now? Why is it just success begat success and we just had to get one? Or what, how'd we get that one? This is not a short-term success story. This has taken years to develop. This, the two sites that are getting the big jobs in Chatham County were first developed or brought into existence by private sector developers and then developed as a so-called mega site, got funding commitments and support from the, from the General Assembly. And through these mega sites, these uh, new plants were offered multiple things that they needed. First of all, land at a reasonable price. Second, lots of water. Third, the attempt to capitalize on the Triangle's big, big booming uh, jobs sector. Lots of talent here, uh, although as the job openings uh, keep increasing, the competition for those jo- the talent is going to an- intensify. And then you have the traditional North Carolina benefits of, of uh, up until now anyway, lower taxes, uh, lower energy prices, uh, and and the uh, the quality of the environment. So what you have is almost like a mushroom effect, right? It's taken deep, taken root under the ground, out of the public eye, and slowly has emerged. Throw in economic incentives, uh, big grants from the General Assembly, grants from uh, the Golden Leaf to help fund inf- infrastructure, the talent, and everything. So here, North Carolina says, hey, we're great for tech, but we're also great for manufacturing. Take a look at us. And so Toyota did, and VinFast did. We know that there were other chip factories that looked here, chose to go elsewhere. But uh, finally, you know, we have this, this perfect storm of developments, if you will, that there's plenty of money, right? There's plenty of land. There's plenty of water. There's plenty of talent to put in the in, in the factories, so why say no to North Carolina, where we're also going to benefit from some pretty handsome tax incentives? Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now we're going to take a little break right now. Uh, we're also going to ask, what's a halo job? So stick with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the WRAL Daily Download. I'm talking with WRAL TechWire editor Rick Smith about North Carolina's recent run of economic success. I want to ask, what's a halo job? Tell, tell us what a halo job is. Okay, so what's a halo? Well, a halo is around the head of an angel. In terms of a, a halo job, we're talking about jobs that come to a specific area because of what's in that core. What's there already, what, what they can contribute there. to. Yeah. Right. Okay, now this, this example where this happened that didn't work out was when Dell decided to build that huge PC factory uh, years ago over, over in the Triad. So there was this great expectation that all these suppliers and vendors and other people would flood the zone, if you will, and add to the j- jobs that uh, Dell was bringing. Well, what happened? Dell pulled the plug and moved the jobs to Mexico. So with these new plants, we're talking about thousands of jobs for people to work there. But there have to be suppliers. There have to be vendors. There have to be the food trucks, right? There have to be all sorts of other things, the restaurants and and supportive industries. And so Mike Walden, the economist at NC State, estimates that for every job that that is created at one of these plants, you can count on at least one additional job, maybe more uh, from the halo effect. Halo effects also used often to describe the triangle. You know, when you look at all the development that's going on in Johnston County, for example, that's attributed to the halo effect. Companies may not have the money or the resources to locate in research triangle proper, but they look at Johnson County and look at the roads, the talent, the benefits of locating their access to uh, 95 and, and 40 and then not too far to RDU. Great place for them to be. 
what are the holes, particularly in the electric vehicle supply chain, that, that still need to be filled uh, in the United States? And, and can they be filled here in North Carolina? Uh, first of all, uh, the, the CHIPS Act that was a bipartisan piece of legislation passed by Congress is, is a lot of money designed to foster growth in the semiconductor industry. The semiconductors are a crucial, if not the crucial, ing ingredient in these next level of developments, not just for our vehicles, but for our computers, right, for, for our laptops, for our phones, that more chips, faster chips, smarter chips, so that's going to – so Wolf Speed built here a plant to produce chips that it can sh ship to New York to another one of its plants where, where the, uh, the silicon is, is cut into smaller pieces and formed into the, the chips. So we're a key piece of that uh, supply hub. VinFast will provide others. Uh, the, the Toyota plant – is absolutely essential to Toyota's plans to become an, an, a major EV manufacturer. Now, there's another thing that isn't talked about too much in North Carolina in terms of s supplying uh, this chain of needs, and that is the possibility of lithium mines uh, uh, that could be built down around Charlotte that uh, the lithium is needed as the core manufacturing ingredient uh, for these high energy long lasting batteries yeah and that's an environmental fight right i mean it, it, on the one hand it, it it helps the green energy revolution on the other hand people probably don't want mines down the street from uh, from their house it's a conundrum uh that right now doesn't have an answer right how how, how does industry provide the essential ingredients and the power that we need as a high-tech society versus the needs of the of the environment when it comes to water pollution uh, 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 and other things. So this is not going to be uh, a short-term solution. Perfect example is what happened in Florida. They're having the heat wave, the drought. They're th facing the threat of blackouts. So what's one of the first things they tell people not to do? Don't charge your electric cars. Yeah. This, this is going to be a big, big issue for years to come. Well, when you kind of turn an economy, an energy economy, and you, you, you try to redirect it a little bit, it, it, you know, making them omelets, you might break some eggs at some point. Yeah, that's right. You don't, you don't change a battleship's uh, course on a dime. It takes a long time. Last question here. I want, I want to talk about how much does this job growth depend on the state government's commitment to clean energy and electric vehicles, does that play much a role? Is it more incentives? Is it more quality of life? Is it workforce? I mean, I guess it's all in a big stew, right? A, a, and then what do companies think of a Mark Robinson, for example, or a controversial lieutenant governor, might be governor in 2024, or a Roy Cooper, a Phil Berger, or a Tim Moore? How much is that leadership? How important is it to these deals? Well, I think you can ask uh, a former governor about the landmine effect of going, going – uh, out of bounds in terms of the of the industrial sector's views with the bathroom law. Yeah, Pat Governor Pat McCrory. Yes, and and I mean, he lost his job, and and uh, uh, and I think the bathroom bill was a key motivator for people. Uh, I think the state faces the same problem right now with some of the other legislation that uh, that is out there. You've got the, this huge divide between con conservatives. And, and liberals, we see that playing out in Washington. Now, I think it's very interesting that uh, Governor Cooper recently said in, uh, about site selection, uh, claimed credit for heading off what he called controversial legislation, right? But at the same time, right, Republicans are touting the fact that they were able to strike compromises uh, with the governor and strike deals for the budget, would inclu which includes a lot of the funding and these huge grants that are absolutely necessary to get, get industry to come here. And tax cuts, too, passed either over the governor's veto in past years or with his kind of begrudging assent. Now we have divided government, uh, which could change in November. Republicans want to win a supermajority, get rid of the governor's veto. But that is a topic for another day. We're going to wrap it up. Thank you, folks, for listening to the WRL Daily Download. Thanks to Rick. Appreciate your being here. Thanks, Thanks for making us part of your morning routine. This is a, there's another great way, though, to get WRL news in the morning. That's the morning briefing newsletter. It's a daily email waiting in your inbox every day with triangle news, events, headlines to get you ready for that day. Sign up 
at wral.com newsletter. And until next time, this is The Daily Download. Thank you.